Hi, it's John Adams, and I'm the Pub Crusader. It's been a few weeks since I last spoke to you about ASIC and the package and the ASIC inquiry. And there are things happening in the background that I can't speak of yet, but be rest assured that that agenda is well under control and we are going to pursue that to the maximum ability that we can. But I wanted to come and speak to you today about an issue that is raging across Europe, and that is a new push by the European Parliament to implement a cash transaction ban. Now, for those people who have been following my work over the last few years would know that when Australia attempted to implement a cash transaction ban in 2019 and 2020, me and Martin North and a whole bunch of other people across the country, including the Citizens Party, we rallied thousands of people across the country to stop that coming into law in Australia. And we were successful in that attempt. And yet, here we have the Europeans going back to the same old arguments that we were able to defeat in Australia, including money laundering, terrorism financing, and tax evasion, and all those sort of arguments there is a new push to um, limit the use of cash in Europe. And some on the internet are saying that this is part of the central bank digital currency agenda. Now, uh, there have been claims on the internet to say that the, uh, that the cash transaction ban is now the law across the European Union. I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. I've been doing a bit of a deep dive. I've been in contact with the European Parliament and with one of the European embassies in Canberra to figure out what's going on. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. Now, if we just go on to our first slide here, I just want people to remember that in 2016, Germany attempted, the German government attempted to implement a cash transaction ban across Germany at 5,000 euros and that met, that was met with fierce resistance by the German people led by a mainstream media newspaper in Germany and that was the first instance that we know of in the developed world where the cash transaction ban policy was blocked and so the German people were able to defeat the cash transaction ban on that occasion. Across Europe and other countries like France and Italy and Spain, cash transaction bans are the law of the land. In some instances, they are between one to 2,000 euros. But Germany was able to stand tall and say, we want freedom, we want cash, and that's what they will achieve in 2016. Now, Australian policymakers saw this and said that, that we want to implement the same sort of uh, policy. Again, the whole claim was around minimizing tax evasion, stopping money laundering, stop, uh, stopping uh, f terrorism financing, and all this sort of stuff. That was the main push. Martin North and I led the effort to say there's a broader agenda around the elimination of cash, nothing to do with money laundering, nothing to do with the tax evasion. It's all about the monetary system. It's all about the transition away from the existing physical cash system that we know to a central bank digital currency where they can implement things like negative nominal interest rates. When we led the campaign in 2019 and 2020, I was given the platform by the Senate Economics Legislation Committee to testify why the $10,000 cash transaction ban that was being proposed by the Morrison government was a bad idea. And when I spoke to Parliament, if we can look at the next slide, Aaron Patrick from the Financial Review again, came out on the attack. There was an article in 2019 where the article attacked Martin North and myself for attacking the whole policy pitch. But then on the day that I went to testify on the 30th of January 2020, Aaron Patrick was there in the audience and he was basically saying that I was pushing a conspiracy theory that had little to do with the actual facts on the ground. And even though I had, if you look at that last paragraph, an 80 strong, uh, an 80 person strong audience giving me a round of applause after my opening statement. Um, that that all of these people were deluded because I was doing these doomsday videos on YouTube. This is what the establishment basically said um, about me and my testimony. Now, after this uh, testimony, the pandemic uh, came into full effect, and then by the end of 
2020, uh, myself, uh, Citizens Party, and One Nation, Senator Malcolm Roberts, we were able to work together to get the proposed legislation, the currency restrictions on the use of cash bill 2019 to be thrown out of the Senate. And and, on, and when that happened in December, the Sydney Morning Herald, Shane Wright, on the 3rd of December 2020, wrote, it, wrote the story, plan for $10,000 cash ban is dead, dead, dead. So we, Australia, became the second country in the developed world to stop this cash transaction ban from happening. The other thing I should say is, whereas in Germany, they had mainstream media support to push this, in Australia, this was this was purely done using the alternative media, YouTube, social media, rallying people across the country, the grassroots, phone calls, emails, bombarding every single politician in the country and saying, we want our freedom, we will not give up physical cash. And that's why we're able to prevail. Now, the big news out of Europe is the European Union is trying to bring a policy across Europe and to basically override the wishes of the German people. Um, and if they are successful in doing this, this is going to be a fundamental blow for freedom in Europe. And this will help them advance their agenda, the agenda of Christine Lagarde at the European Central Bank to, to come in with the totalitarian central bank digital currency. So if we look at the next slide so the key thing that has emerged in the last six weeks is um a press release by the european parliament and the title of the press release is new eu measures against money laundering and terrorism financing and this is the quote from the press release the opening paragraph on tuesday meps i.e the politicians from the economic monetary affairs and civil liberties justice and home affairs committees adopted their position on three part three pieces of draft legislation on the financing provisions of EU anti-money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism policy. Now, the key thing that came from these three pieces of legislation is this so-called new cash transaction ban. So let's go to the next slide. And so again, this is coming from the uh, European Parliament website. And so the title is Prevention of Money Laundering Terrorism Financing. And this is the key quote, quote, to restrict transactions in cash and crypto assets MEPs want to cap payments that can be accepted by persons providing goods and services. They set limits up to €7,000 for cash payments, €1,000 for crypto asset transfers where the customer cannot be identified. Um, the whole essence of cash, whether it's here in Australia or, or, or in Europe or anywhere around the world, it's, it's about economic freedom, it's about privacy, it's about living the life you want to live without any form of surveillance by the banks or in terms of the government. Right. That, is the, that is a core political, civil and economic right that we must maintain. Now, because of the claims that a, uh, the policy had become law, because of this information on the European Parliament website, I decided to email the media office of the European Parliament to ask them what is what is what is the status of the situation? So I got an I got a reply yesterday, and here is the email I received. Quote: Good morning. European Parliament has confirmed this new negotiating position in April. The negotiation with member states on the final shape of this law start this week. So the text still under consideration. So so that is the key position of where we're sitting in Europe today. The cash ban, the $7,000 cash euro ban, has not passed the European Parliament. It is not the law. It is it is still on the books. And so the fact that they are now at the position of the final negotiation is obviously a critical point. But, but for those that are claiming already out there, I've seen all these videos all over the place saying that it's already the law, and that is not the case. The battle for cash in Europe is still alive and that's and that's obviously a critical um thing to note now the other th key thing that i thought was critical to confirm is what is the per what is the position of germany because germany already knocked this back in 2016 and now we have the european parliament and christine lagarde and all of these various totalitarian fascists trying to force this on the german people
And so I decided to last night email the German embassy in Canberra here in Australia and ask them, what is the position of the German government? So if we look at the last email I received today from the German embassy in Australia, it says, quote, dear Mr. Adams, thank you for your message. As you would be aware, the recent adoption of a position by the relevant committee in the European Parliament on the draft legislation in question is only one step in the EU legislative process. In December 2022, the EU member states in the Council voted on the, the proposals originally tabled by the European Commission in mid-2021. As reported by the press, Germany abstained during the vote. As the German Federal Ministry of the Interior supported certain aspects of the proposed measures, whereas the German Federal Ministry of Finance opposed them. So the current status is, and this is an email I only received a couple of hours ago, is the position of Germany in this fight for cash is still hanging in the balance. It's not absolutely clear. There's still a possibility that common sense may, pre may prevail in Europe and that the freedom to use physical cash uh, with with no restrictions from the government would still continue, but we'll have to see how it plays out. But can I be absolutely crystal clear? And this is the key message of this video. If, if the forces in Canberra, the Albanese government and other people in Parliament, if there is any idea in their heads that they are going to have a second crack of implementing a cash transaction ban in Australia, I am here to say that we in the freedom movement are going to resist this with everything we have. We will not allow the federal parliament to restrict our freedom around cash. And so, so in, in terms of the next couple of months, it's going to be critical to see what happens in Europe on this issue of the cash transaction ban and particularly what happens with Germany. So I'm going to keep track of this entire issue. I'm going to be on the case to figure out what what is the German government going to do moving forward and whether the Germans are going to hold strong or whether they're going to surrender. But not only that, I'm going to make sure that we educate the Australian people again and again and again to make sure that if there is any idea within the Australian bureaucracy, within the Treasury, the Parliament, wherever, that they think they are going to do this to us again, they're going to try to shove a cash transaction ban down our throats we are going to be out there on the front line to let people know that no matter what happens in Europe, Australia will stand strong. We will not allow this to happen to us. We fought again in 20, we fought once in 2019 and 2020. We will fight again. We are going to be we're going to be we are going to be victorious because if truth be told, we love freedom more than the Europeans. I am going to make it my personal mission if this issue comes up again, that we will fight and we will win. You can, you can bet your bottom dollar on that. I am John Adams, and I am the Public Crusader.